Hey, 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 it's Grips, and as always, thanks for joining me as you do. All right, Video Studio 9 came out with a whole new bunch of filters in the new Blue Video Essentials V2. Or is that 8 or 7? V2. Oh, never mind. <laughs> yeah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I know it's 9. All right, so we've got a new package of filters, and I there's a video filter in there that I really like, which is the Gradient Fill Pro. And I'm going to give you a quick demonstration of how we can apply this for certain things like your video or a still picture. I did find that it works really, really well with PNG file. So I've got a PNG file in here. For those who don't know what the difference is between PNG, let's say I have another photo here. I drop this onto my second lay or the overlay track. You'll see that in the preview thumbnail, I have a black uh, background, but as soon as I apply it to a clip, it removes the black background because in actuality, there is no background. And this is what a PNG does. It's in an alpha format. All right, just a quick expl explanation for those guys who didn't know what PNG meant. All right, so now we have it in here. Let's go into the FX filters and let's go straight into the new blue Essential 7 and then we go to Gradient Fill Pro and we'd click and drag that onto our timeline. Double click, Customs Filter. So here we go. All right, I'll give you a real quick rundown what everything does. Obviously, here's your presets, which is cool. I, I, I uncheck key frames because I just wanted to be static all the way through. So your first color, your second color, your transparent color, and your second color for your transparent. So quickly, what that means is your first color, uh, very simple, is the white at the top, and your second color is the black at the bottom. Now, let's say, for instance, you want a solid color. You can then say disable the second color, and bam, it's gone. Now, if you're using a PNG, this is why I like the PNG format, then this transparent one works. If you don't use, a tran if you don't use PNG, this will not work. So what this does works with the transparent color. Remember I said to you in the, in the thumbnail, we had uh, a black background, but in actuality there's nothing there. Well, we can actually work in the alpha channel and also create colors in that, like reds and blues or any other color you come up with. Bear with me, I'll show you in a minute. So let's do something very simple. I'm gonna disable this one here, like so. And then I'm gonna apply a blend mode, say multiply. Okay, so you can see how now my picture came back. And now I can change that to whatever color I want. So maybe the logo, I want it red. So I'm gonna apply red color. And bam, it does it for me. So this is why I like this gradient fill because I can take a picture which was originally one color and then change it. I can blend it so I can make it go almost back to the original color or blend it towards more red. I can make the whole logo, the opacity of the whole logo disappear so I can have the softer in the background. It's not applying to this window, but it is definitely applying to this window, as you will notice. See, so, and I don't know why it's not updating on this window. Corral, if you're listening, fix it. <laughs> that's not their fault, it's the uh, new blue filter, okay? So that's what it does. Now, what, if I wanted to, I can also use the second color and I can uh, enable that. So now I've got the black. So it's the same thing. I can bring the blacks in or out and I can make it any color I want. So let's make it yellow. So now I've got a bit of a yellow tinge to it. And again, I can play with these controls, how much of that yellow I want to bring in and out. And then I can change the opacity of the yellow. Again, it's not updating on this window, but it is updating on that window. So let's focus on that. See, so this is what I like about this filter. I can I completely take a photo of a PNG and manipulate the colors. And that's a really cool thing. Now, because I have a transparency, so I'm gonna apply this first. So I'm gonna bring this one down. So that way we can really work in the uh, transparency. Oh, let's go fit to height. And here's something else that I've never actually told anyone, or maybe I have, I can't remember. But in the older versions, when you right click, you didn't have this option, fit the height and fit the, the width. So that, I like that feature because before you had to go keep aspect ratio and fit the screen and, 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 and play around with that until you get it right. Now you just go, nah, fit the height, and there you go. All right, I went completely off track, but let's get back on track. So let's grab something like this, just purely for demonstrations. So you can see the contrast when I start applying into these secondary colors. Let's go back, customs filter. So now what I can do, I can start changing. Not the yellow, this is just purely so you can see what's gonna happen. I can now manipulate, so watch the opacity. I can bring the opacity and see how the black background originally, I can now change that as well. Like so. So now I can actually use the alpha channel and create different looks. There you go, look at that. Oh, went right over, didn't I? 
So the yellow in the background was just purely for demonstration so you can see the difference in contrast. So keep in mind, if I had a bigger, an actual photo that fit the actual frame size, this would be a lot more impressive. And yes, you're right, I really should prepare much better than this. Anyway, so now you know exactly what these two functions do. And you also have a drop shadow and you can create that if you use text. And again, I'm just not doing that today. I've just got the photo, so let's keep moving on that. So I'm gonna cancel that. And now I'm just doing something very simple. I'm gonna delete both these pictures or the, both these out of the timeline. And I'm gonna grab a picture. And this is where this is where this also shines with just general photos and so forth. So let's go back, bump, let's grab that filter again. There you go and apply it. So here we can do a little bit of tr uh, tweaking with the actual picture. So let's go into multiply and you've got different types. You've got you, I like you. So you can make the whole picture change color if you want. So instead of, uh, instead of being what it was, I'm gonna make it purple. So you might wanna go for a purple look. Let's do that. And then uh, there's my purple and I can also disable the black. So of all I've got is a purple black ground and whatever. Now, what I can do is this, if I have a look at the original photo, you'll notice that the background or the sky wasn't exactly blue. So look what I can do. I'm gonna go back to white, so that kind of stays neutral. And then I'm gonna go back into this one, enable it, and I'm gonna make this a blue sky, and press OK. And then I'm gonna go into multiply. So now I've actually changed the color in the sky. So uh, I've got this upside down, haven't I? I really have. My, 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 my. I should have this as the blue sky. Yes, now we're looking good. <laughs> and then just make this the white sky. You can tell I haven't done any videos for a while because I'm so unorganized. But the reason is I've been uh, focusing on my business, moved house, built a new one, and I finally got my office set up and I'm all good to go. All right, so you can clearly see if I start to move this, you can see there is definitely a difference in the blue sky. So now it's really exaggerated blue. So again, we might play with the opacity a bit so it's not so obvious. We can bring the blend down so again, it's not so obvious that you've literally manipulated the sky. So let's have a quick look at this. And let's have a look at the before and after. Before, after, before, after. So again, we've, we've just tweaked a little bit. So. If you're not aggressive with it and you just do small tweaks, I reckon you could really enhance photos, change the look. Now remember, this can also be applied to videos. It just doesn't have to be photos. It can be applied to videos. But now you've got a basic understanding what the Gradient Fill Pro does, and you can have a lot of fun with it. So there you go, my friends. And as always, thanks for watching.